Hello and welcome to Live Wire Markets. I'm Ali Selby and today we're sitting down with the CEO of Washington H, Sol Patterson, Todd Barlow. Solpats is a true dividend stalwart, providing investors with unique exposure to a range of asset classes, industries and investment strategies. Today, we're going to be learning all about the company's latest full year report, how Australia's answer to Berkshire Hathaway is investing today, as well as some of the long term themes the team has identified. Thank you so much for joining us today, Todd. I'm really excited for this discussion. First up, you just released your latest full year report. What are some of the numbers investors need to be aware of? As an investment portfolio, the number one thing that we are concerned about is the, uh, the growth in the overall value of the portfolio and that increased 12.3% throughout the year. That's 1.2% better than market. And more pleasingly, over the last 20 years, we've done 12.5% per annum and that's 3.5% better than market. So if an investor had put uh, an investment into sales 20 years ago and let that compound over 20 years, uh, that investment would be nearly tenfold increase and that's more than double what an investment in the uh, in index would have done. Uh, the other aspect that really pleased us was the cash generation that we got from the portfolio. That increased 22% and that enables us to pay the higher dividends that we've been paying for the last couple of decades. Let's stay with that. Solpats has increased its dividends consistently over the past 23 years. Can that continue despite the worsening economic outlook? We'd like to think so. So we are the only ASX All Lords company that's increased every year uh, of this century. Uh, so 23 years unbroken history of, of increasing dividends. But what's been really noticeable is that the, uh, the dividends have ticked up in the last couple of years. So they've increased at about 18.5% uh, CAGR for the last two years, which means that the board is telling investors that we have some real confidence around the outlook for our uh, cash generation from the portfolio and our ability to keep paying those increased dividends. Over the past 12 months, Solpat's investment team has sold $1.4 billion in equities, the majority of which were in large caps. In the report, you note that much of that capital was redistributed towards private equity and structured yield investments like private credit. There's obviously been a lot of coverage on that $1.4 billion exit in equities, as well as your bearish economic outlook. Beyond your investments in TPG Telecom, New Hope, Brickworks, Tuas, Apex Healthcare, Pangana Capital and Aeris Resources, are you seeing any other opportunities in listed companies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we still have $3 billion of uh, listed equities across the portfolio outside those strategic investments that you just mentioned. Uh, and we're seeing lots of pockets of value. For example, the small cap portfolio is about 700 million of that 3 billion. Uh, last year, it went up 12% against an index that was largely flat. So it's done particularly well and been able to locate pockets of value. Um, there's been lots of activity in the large cap portfolio in making it more defensive and, and tightening it up and making it more concentrated. Uh, so we still see lots of value in, in equities, but, but like you said, we see better opportunities in the uh, unlisted space, particularly uh, in structured yield and, and private equity that we've been deploying further capital to. How are you getting exposure within small caps and large caps? Is it an index like broad based exposure or are you stock picking? Yeah, we're stock picking. So we, we employ uh, fund managers who are, uh, are good at that. And you know, as I said, the small cap index has performed extremely well. Uh, large caps uh, performed a little bit worse than the market last year, but that was primarily because of the activity that they were doing to rebalance the portfolio and also taking a whole of portfolio view. So they were underweight uh, energy stocks as an example, because we've got so much in New Hope. Tell me a little bit about the investment team at Solpats. You've got internal fund managers but you also use external fund managers of, as well. How does that all work? The overwhelming majority of our funds are managed in-house. Uh, it's only been in the last couple of years that we've started allocating to international fund managers because we want to get exposure to those asset classes. Um, but I would say 98% you know, of the, the funds that we have are currently managed by our investment team, which is about uh, 25 people. Um, the way that we operate is uh, as one single investment team across all of the asset classes. That makes us better investors in our view because we're generalists. Uh, we, we then allocate to wherever we see the best risk adjusted returns. Uh, we share ideas, we share market in intelligence and, and it makes us uh, a higher performing unit. Let's move to where you're finding opportunity in private equity and structured yield. I feel like much of our audience may not understand those asset classes as well as they would equities. So can you please take us through those opportunities, the returns you're expecting, their durations, and the rationale behind being so aggressive here? 
Sure. So private equity, we do a little bit differently to the rest of the market. So a lot of private equity specialist funds tend to be short duration funds and they have to make investments and then return them, uh, uh, return the funds to shareholders through an exit in sort of five, six, seven years. Whereas uh, we have the benefit of long term captive capital on our balance sheet, which means that we can build up businesses for the long term. And so our approach to private equity investing is to find good businesses in good industries with good dynamics around the uh, you know, demographic profiles or, or we also look at what Australia is uh, globally competitive at. So we picked a few themes and we've built businesses around each of those themes. Uh, we added to each of those themes in the last 12 months. Uh, so we made seven new bolt-on acquisitions across our four major um, portfolio companies. Uh, the industries that we're in is the energy transition, uh, wealth management, uh, agriculture and education and through education we're invested in swim schools so we, we made some further acquisitions there. Mm. Why the aggressive positioning there in comparison to I guess equities? A couple of reasons, one because we're seeing good pockets of value in particularly that sort of small to mid uh, sized private equity uh, businesses. Um, also we wanted to build up our pipeline because we were underweight private equity for a long time. Private equity has always been a big feature of Solpats. Um, however, over the years, those private equity businesses like New Hope and TPG got so large, we put them into the public domain. Whilst we retained our stake, they've become public equities because we IPO'd them. And, uh, and so we wanted to build the pipeline of private equity again, and, and, and so we started doing that over the last sort of three or four years. Okay, for all the investment bankers who are rolling up their sleeves to pitch you an idea, what does it take for a business to make the grade? Well, like I said, it's about long-term value uh, appreciation. We're trying to build businesses for the long term, uh, businesses that are generating robust cash flows, uh, are resilient across the economic cycle, uh, are going to round out our portfolio nicely and, and are not necessarily correlated to other things that we already have, um, but also businesses that need our help. We don't want to participate in an auction and pay the highest price against uh, competing capital. We want to uh, work on uh, proprietary deals, which means that we're, we're uh, negotiating with the, the company um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and they like our capital because we're there for the long term. We want to help them build a real business. Uh, we want to help them to succeed. We'll back them with further capital uh, and we let them get on with running the business, whereas a lot of other private equity funds will come in and take control and ownership uh, and then turn, and turn it into a, uh, an exit in, in a relatively short time. Is there anything that turns you off a business instantly? I mean, I think there's things that don't suit us, things that are very fashionable or fad-like, uh, things that don't have supporting cash flows. We find them very hard to uh, understand from a valuation perspective. Uh, and the thing that turns us on that not, uh, is people who are backable, you know, investment teams and management teams that we can, uh, we can get behind because we are relying on them to perform. We're just the capital allocators. We're just there to help if we, if we can. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's the people that are, that are going to run the business. Solpats currently has $911 million in cash on its balance sheet. That's 87.3% higher than it was during the previous period. What will it take for you to put that cash to work? Well, we're already starting to deploy some of it. So at year end, we had over $500 million of uh, committed but uh, unallocated investments across private equity and the structured yield portfolio. We've started to see some of those uh, investments uh, already come to fruition. Um, and that's taking a global view about allocating across, uh, you, we do actually allocate to international fund managers who are looking at private equity uh, and uh, private credit uh, because we can't do that ourselves. Uh, so we've, um, we, we've got quite a bit of money that's going to be deployed in the next uh, six months or so. Uh, but hopefully it doesn't use up all the, the cash and we'll preserve some for you know, good opportunities that might come. Okay, I want to turn to the outlook now. In the report, you talk about pronounced impacts that you foresee for FY24. Can you be more specific? What are the risks that you see on the horizon? Yeah, we obviously can't predict the future, um, but we do see there's greater risks than, than what there have been. And, and it's primarily driven by where we are in the cycle. You know, it's, it's been a very long economic cycle where things have been going well for a long time. Um, and interest rates are continuing to go up and interest rates do have an impact on asset prices and, it, and they do have an impact on consumer behaviour. We're starting to see some of that happen now and we're starting to see 
you know, the pricing for risk in both equity markets and debt markets is, is going up, and, and so that's good for investors like us. Um, but it does mean you need to be a lot more discerning. Can you take us through some of the indicators that you, the team uses to inform those views? Well, we're not really sort of macroeconomic experts and we don't uh, look at you know, m the macro economy as, a, uh, as an indicator of how we're going to invest, but we do look at the direction of things. And as I said, uh, your interest rates we know are being priced to go higher for longer. Uh, and that does have an impact on, on the way that people invest and the way that people spend their money and, uh, and the way that people behave. So I don't know whether there's going to be a recession or not, but, um, but there's a reasonable chance that there will be, uh, whether it's here or, or overseas, and, and that will have an impact on, on how businesses perform. So we are looking at those businesses that are going to do well in spite of any kind of downturn. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, any businesses where uh, there might be a, a dislocated market and a mispricing of, of asset prices and, and that's when uh, we'll take advantage. You talk there to a worsening economic climate. How does Solpats typically perform in periods like that? Well, we actually do really well uh, and we did some analysis on this uh, in June and, and it's, uh, you can find it in a, an update that we provided to the market. Uh, and we looked at the last 20 years of data uh, how we perform versus how the market performs. And in the last 20 years, the market's been negative about a third of the months. Uh, and when the market is negative, it's uh, on average 3.5% down. And in each of those down months, Sols is nearly 2.1% better per month. Uh, so we've had a, a really long history of, of outperformance when the market is negative. Um, but the, uh, you know, I would say that our portfolio today is actually better able to withstand market disturbances than it was historically. We're more uh, diversified across asset classes. We've got a lot more cash. Uh, and uh, so I think yeah, the next time around, we'll actually do even better. Let's look more at opportunities that you're thinking about in the long term. In the report, you talk about three themes being energy transition, digitization, and logistics. You recently invested in a uranium project, NextGen. It has a 9% yield. Is that investment about the yield or is it because you're bullish on the outlook for uranium and it's part of that energy transition theme? It's both. I mean, we're very bullish on uranium uh, and we actually bought some straight equity as well as the uh, convertible node. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, it's just another example of the the flexibility that we have in the, the, the mode that we invest. Um, you know, if you're getting paid a 9% yield with a right to convert into equity, um, that's, a, that's a pretty good story, but equally we're happy with the equity as well. Uh, we look at uh, uranium as just one of the, uh, the future needs that the world will have to uh, migrate away from a lot of the carbon-based energy that we have today. Uh, that is going to be a phenomenal um, uh, theme that's going to play out over the next two, three, four decades. Uh, so we're you know, putting ourselves in a position to benefit from that. Now we have some old energy companies in New Hope. We also think that they will have a, a role to play for the next couple of decades. Um, but uh, in our private equity portfolio as an example, Amp Control is uh, an electrical engineering business that helps people decarbonise. Uh, it's an it, it's a extremely interesting business with lots of growth ahead. Mm. Are there any other opportunities you want to call out that give investors exposure to those those future facing themes? Well, I think across the, the portfolio, I mean, when we talk about digitisation, we've been invested in uh, TPG for a long time and the uh, increasing use of data, uh, uh, particularly, you know, the hand handheld devices, uh, the internet of things, that, that's a phenomenal uh, theme that we've benefited on uh, from for a couple of decades and I think will continue. Uh, online consumption and logistics, you mentioned, um, uh, we've got a 43% stake in Brickworks, which has two and a half billion dollars of industrial property. That is a phenomenal asset class in terms of uh, uh, you know, well-located real estate that services the supply chain that people need for online consumption. Uh, that, that has uh, gone up at over 20% per annum for the last 16, 17 years. Um, so, uh, you know, I think artificial intelligence and uh, that, that sort of thing, you know, whilst we don't have a specific investment, will be a, uh, will be a uh, facilitator for many of our businesses. Uh, and I think that there's, there's a really big theme there that will play out. So um, across the portfolio, we think about these long-term themes and we, we try to get uh, exposure where we can.
Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today, Todd. I really enjoyed that chat. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed that too, don't forget to subscribe to LiveWire's YouTube channel. We're adding so much great content just like this every single week.